Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about The Leftovers, Season 3, Episode 4. It's called... Good Day Melbourne. Full spoilers for the episode. This, is this one counts. Oh no, I agree, this is one. You got one. Th- this is number two. And uh, count- no. That last one counts still. <laughs> no, 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 this, no, no. This one... There is no debate whatsoever. This one does count. I absolutely, I will give you this one. This, according to the first statement you ever made, this one applies to that. It does. But the, by the latest deal, the latest, you know, at the end of season no, two. No, the, the second deal didn't negate the first one. The second one built upon the original no, no, statement. No. The end of season two, we said, if more than half are set in Australia, not if more than half have the family in Australia. And I would argue that Kevin Senior is part of the family, so I'm counting. He has never been a part of the main family. He's always been a side character. Don't you even start. Don't you, don't you he even is start. family. He's distant family. He's his dad. In, rela- in terms of TV, in terms of the regular characters and then the recurring characters who we see occasionally, he's distant. He's occasional. So do you want to talk about what happens in Australia? <laughs> I suppose we can, I. Uh, well, we got airport stuff first. We had some uh, yeah. on the way okay. stuff. Uh, so some symbolic things here. So we, we, we've got Nora and Kevin, you know, getting checked and getting their passports checked. And she, because of all, her, presumably because of you know our work, she has this you know uh, access to the the, the quicker check in. And he's like, "Can I just go with her?" And she's like, "No, you don't have access to it." He's like, "I'm a cop." It doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't have access to it. Try to bar her. And he, he basically turns as if, oh, no, I'll just stay with me then, so we'll just stay together. And no one's like, okay, I'll see you in the other side then, Kevin. And she just walks off. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, right away, they're not in sync. Clearly, yeah. she, at, least, at the very least, Nora's not thinking like a team. She's thinking on her own. And that's that's exemplified even better in a couple of minutes when yeah. he's like, okay, why, why did you go through? Like, you couldn't wait five extra minutes. Yeah. You, what are you, why are you smuggling? Exactly. And she's like, oh, I've got 20 grand strapped to my... St-. And he doesn't even know why she's got this money. He's just like, wait, what? But, yeah, she, she just goes, why have you... Why? What, one of my favourite... <laughs> One of my favourite things on this show is Kevin's what the hell face after Nora says something it's like so that. so good, isn't it? Uh, but they, they go to the bathroom and she's taking it off and she's like, oh, you can't take any more than 10 grand out of the country without, you know, getting taxed and checking it and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's like, why don't you just give me half? And it's just like, huh. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, I think that's it though, isn't it? It's like she's so wrapped up in this and doing yeah. it on her own that she never even thought to include him. Exactly. That that, that was quite clearly there. And then, then they have this sex scene. They kind of have to flirt a little bit. Then they have this sex scene. And it is one of the most unromantic sex scenes ever. It's not even kinky. Like, I mean, sure, they're having sex in the bathroom, but it feels kind of sad. It feels a little bit... Mm. You know, you know, we're doing this to sort of almost fake that we have a connection right now because we, we we could see that we're coming apart at the seams, so we want to feel connected again. So let's yeah. let's have a quickie, uh, and you know the, the music's quite sad during it, but it, you know, again, just to show that it's not really them in the moment, or it's it's not like an important moment. Is we hear the the conversation they're having on the plane, over the top yeah. of it. So we're already, we're already like not interested anymore. We're already moving ahead. So all these little things. Uh, going on, uh, so yeah, she explains why what they're, what they're going there for. She's like, oh yeah, I'm going to like you know prove these people are con artists. They they go into this machine, blah 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 blah. Uh, although you can tell, t- kind of tell he's maybe a little bit concerned. You can see it in his face that maybe is she actually tempted by this? Does she yeah. actually think this is a thing? Uh, but of course they they get to the hotel and she gets the phone call and she's ready to go. They, they joke a little bit about his book. He claims that he read it all on the plane. Although I'm fairly certain he did not. Uh, oh, absolutely not. Because, uh, yeah. you know, after after she leaves, he opens it at the first page like he's going, oh, all right, I'll finally read this. Yeah, but of course, she, she reads that random page about pushing the girl down the well and he gets the next part right because it's not completely made up. Because she, she cracks it. She's like, oh, where does Mac make up this bullshit? And, <laughs> yeah, where did he get all this shit from? Yeah. And, there's that, and I love, whenever it cuts back to that moment of him pushing her and it's just quiet, just... It's always effective. always effective, isn't it? Every yeah. time, doesn't matter how many times they show us. Every time. My favorite part of this scene, though, she gets the phone call. Go, you know, go down and get this bus in fifteen minutes. Blah 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 blah. And she leaves, and he's like, "Oh, I'll go with you." He's like, and she's like, "Oh, you're going to follow me, Kevin?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "No, stay." <laughs> uh, but the final shot when he when she leaves, it's just this wide shot of him 
standing alone in the hotel room and it's just this big empty space and it just he feels so alone and then I think the god rays from the window just enhance it just a little bit more yeah uh, god rays are beams of light just in case I feel like some people might not know that term uh, I'm I'm used to it from games because like, that's what we call them in video games but yeah. Uh, but yeah so great again great little moment so they split up at this point so that the stories it's a very neatly done episode actually because they start together they then diverge and then at the end they come back yes uh, that's kind of the structure of the episode so obviously we'll tackle one at a time so Kevin uh, the TV's on and he can't turn it off so he phones down at the desk I love immediately that we're, we're with Kevin in a hotel room mm. and the TV is there you know Im- immediately thematically it's like okay it's, in, it's on it your links mind back. it links back yeah and he's trying to turn it off he phones down at the desk and it's hooked in at the walls so you know he's just oh, I'll, I'll just reset it from down here right fine and Australia has a show called, called Good Day Melbourne. Of course, they have their their slang Good Day in the title of the show. It's, it's a local local friendliness. <laughs> it just cracks me up. It's just it's, it's almost a parody of yourself. It is, putting isn't it? Putting Good Day in your in your TV title. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'd be like an English show having like mate at the end of. <laughs> just called all right, mate. <laughs> that's that's the morning show in England. All right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope that's real. Or I- Ireland has top of the morning to you as their that's breakfast show. That's gotta be real. It probably is. Now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> uh, but so it just it just it, actually, Joey, it cracks me up because uh, you know you have Good Morning America. I love that Australia looked at that and went, "We're taking our versions." Good day. Yeah, they, they just went. That's too long. <laughs> Good day, Australia. That's our version. <laughs> uh, but he sees something very interesting. He's, he's watching, they're talking about pancakes. And pancakes are cool. I like pancakes, sure. That was pretty much their entire thing. It's like, yeah. look, who doesn't like pancakes? I mean, they're not like, I like I like Belgian waffles more than pancakes. If I'm, you know, if I'm picking something that I'd put syrup on, I'd take the Belgian waffles over the pancakes. But I mean, it's preference. I'll be honest, I'm not that big on pancakes. They're okay, they're fine. I, I like them with bacon. They go well with bacon. Mm. I'd rather just have the bacon. Oh no, I'm actually, uh, you know, d- d- if you had syrup on bacon, it's. I, I, I will stick with with my my bacon and sausage sandwiches. Thank you. But, I'm not saying you have it every time. I'm saying it's a nice thing to have. Mm. That doesn't appeal to me. Oh no, it's it's nice. It's nice. Uh, but you know, Belgian waffles, uh, uh, I, I like more. They, they, they go, they're quite nice. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we're not here to talk about pastry goods. And maybe we goods. should be. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should be. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, the donuts. Oh, we've not had twin yeah. peaks in a while. That's donut talk <laughs> coming soon from Mild Fuzz TV. <laughs> pastry talk. We should just, yeah, we just buy in different donuts from different places. We go to Krispy Kreme, get get a get a different selection, and we'll just try them on in, on camera. It's like, okay, oh, this is the. Do you know what? I bet there's a channel who does this. This is the, this is the thing we're oh, making of fun of it. But there's a channel who does this. Of course there is, and you probably watch it, don't you? Me or the audience? No, the audience. All oh, right, okay, uh, it's fine. All right, make fun of them. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so but what, you see something, that, you've got the crowd outside the window, it's got that sort of morning TV show thing where they have the crowd outside, and you can see them. And sure enough, there's someone there who looks mighty familiar. Mm. Evie. And she's just staring at the camera, as if she's looking right at Kevin, and Kevin goes right up to the TV, and of course, again, thematically going back to the whole thing with the, uh, the uh, you know, the talking to the TV in the hotel room, like he's like, are you looking at me? Are you talking to me? You know, I actually was wondering if this was... You know, project it. Can the can he project backwards through the TV? Because obviously, you know, mm. he he was communicating with his with his dad at the time. That was was Kevin Senior looking at a TV screen. Yeah, yeah. Your your mind's your mind's kind of racing. So, but the TV turns off just as just as he's about to potentially get an answer, right? So yeah. he goes back. He's like, turn the TV back on. But instead of waiting for the TV, he's like, hey, "Good day, Melbourne. Is that is that like filmed live? Is it local? Like where is it?" So he he runs down, gets a cab, goes to the goes yeah. to the station, and there's some funny moments where he gets up to the front of the window and he's looking around for her and he's on TV for a split second, which is actually a, a nice little seed for later because that comes back into play. It is, it's end. important, and and also the reverse seed as well. Like we actually have it when he's on on the TV. It's like oh, it's a bad day to be called Kevin, and you know, we oh, learn yeah. about I glossed the over police the, yeah. chief Kevin and yeah. his father being that missing. was before the pancakes. 
That was, yeah. Before the pancakes. Sort of like directly before, because they went, oh, bad to be Kevin. Look, well, out, look how awful this is. Yeah, that's actually, pancakes. actually, it's worth mentioning because it, it, that, that, that's the reason why he even pays attention to the TV when he when he's looking. Because mm. he hears, it's you know, I hope you're not called Kevin in Melbourne today. And he turns around uh, and it brings up the, you know, the police chief and then his dad. But so he, see, he sees what, who he thinks is Evie walking off and he chases after her down an alleyway. And he makes a turn around and she's got a different accent. And obviously at this point, honestly, I'm thinking it's not her. I'm thinking this just looks like Evie and he's, you know, connecting the dots and he's determined that it is. Uh, it gets a little bit heated and this guy comes out to sort of like defend her in case she's in trouble and he, Kevin gets headbutted. Uh, but he does catch her name and he, he grabs a quick photo on his phone before mm. before things go on. And he talks to Laurie, he phones Laurie and he's like, I think I just saw Evie. And she's like, Kevin, now listen you know, whatever you think you saw, but he sends the photo and she has this, this moment where she's like, oh, that is her. It's like, okay, don't tell John. Don't tell John. This is, tell me know what's going on. And she she searches for her and like, it, it connects her to the library, the local library in Melbourne. Uh, but that's pretty much it. But of course, when he actually goes there to confront her and he, because of course, Laurie tries to say, don't go anywhere near the library. Don't go, don't go looking for her. He so of course, he's going to go to the library. Yeah, he immediately just storms off to the library. It almost makes another scene, but uh, this potential Evie sort of says, no, it's okay, I know him, and she goes and talks to him. Uh, and she's like, okay, like, I am this Evie. <laughs> she's not very convincing, admittedly, but she's I am this Evie. Uh, I want to get away. Let me do this. Don't tell my family. Blah, 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 blah. And then when he confronts her, she's like, oh, she told me to that you were crazy and like or ill was the specific word ill yeah and he's like who told you and that's when we cut back to uh you know texas and we've got laurie answers the phone and he's like you told her it was ill what the hell and you can kind of see where the conversation is going because she's she's like you know look at the photo again and you, yeah it was one of those where i'd been suspended since he sent the photo mm. and you know she takes a moment when she looks at it before she says that is it. i was like and it specifically doesn't show us the photo when she sees it, yeah. like we we only see it when with Kevin, which is obviously the altered perception. We don't see it from with her. And she neatly brings up that whole conversation where you don't tell someone who's having a psychotic break that they're having a psychotic break. You you yes, find common it leads ground. to them killing themselves. Yeah, uh, and she she's like she makes him look at the photo, and it's like a completely different person. He looks up, and it's just this this other woman. Because the, I think the biggest sign, of course, was when she admits that it's Evie. Her accent doesn't change. Yeah, it, it was it was. Im- immediately noticeable wasn't it yeah it's like why is her because I, I because i was kind of because if it was real i was waiting for that moment where her accent just slipped back because that was going to be a big deal like oh she's got her accent back like yeah uh and sure but sure enough no uh that that's it's just not her uh it's, it's a really really great scene as he's realizing you know that the violin kind of that the, one of the main themes is playing yeah as he's having this moment of realization that he is maybe not completely okay because uh, he talks about because she's like why why are you in Australia you you and I'm like yes yes Lloyd why is he in Australia these are good <laughs> questions good questions to ask and yeah. so like, don't don't look too hard <laughs> why did you run away and he's like no it's Laurie that had to come she ran away and it's like it's almost like for him that's like a self moment of realization that like she was kind of willing to just drop everything and go like she because mm. at this point he already knows that this wasn't official business that she's kind of gone rogue as he put it yeah. Uh, so like, not only is he worried about himself, he's worried about her mindset. Like, why is she, you know, letting things go to just run away in a moment's notice? What is she here to do? Uh, and you can kind of see that worry on his face, along with the, you know, the fact, the realization that he's kind of run away from his priorities and his mm-hmm. his uh, responsibilities. So it's, it's, a, it's a whole 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 big big scene. Uh, it's it's really well done. Yeah, it's great. So jumping over to Laurie, I oh, not Laurie, so Nora. Uh, can, can, before we actually talk about her stuff, I want to talk about how great the edit is that moves into her, that, that segues into her stuff. It's when Kevin runs out for the cab, mm. and you, you watch him get in the cab, and it goes round, and then as the camera follows it round, it just it just stops at the bus stop, and she's there. Yeah, yeah, she's still waiting for the bus. And this woman comes up, and she's like, hey, can you, I've got a job interview in this restaurant here, can you look after my baby? Because they won't, they won't hire me if I bring a baby to the, the interview. Uh, of course, they shouldn't think that way, but it's that kind of thing where you assume they'll, they'll have this. Oh, she, she can't handle you know being a mother and showing up and work for time. She'll always have excuses. She has to you know. Yeah. Uh, and of course, thematically for Nora, this is like a big test because like her kids are a driving force for her entire drama that for the entire show. Her kids went missing. Then she had Lily. She gave up Lily. Now she's been had another baby. 
to, so much to the point that this this guy at the bus stop's like, hey, like that's very trusting of you. She could run off. Like she might be wanting to get rid of that baby. And she she obviously the bus comes and she runs inside. It's like, oh, you have to take the baby back. I, I need to go. I need to go. Which I I mean, she she'd be completely like understand like it'd be completely understandable for Nora to just say no I can't take the baby I'm waiting on a bus I yeah. need to be somewhere at a certain time I can't be waiting around uh, but she runs in and gives the baby back and run, runs back out I like to think that she even just took the baby in the first place because of because of how she is with kids and because of her history yeah and also I love that she yelled you know discrimination's illegal on her uh, way out. yeah she was trying to help out on the way yeah. out so she didn't you know maybe didn't ruin her chances although the fact that a crazy woman ran in with her baby and then yelled that in the doesn't way help out, does it no I feel I feel like that's hurting her chances more than just getting with the yeah. baby in the first place but and know. and then then comes one of in my opinion one of the most unbelievable moments of the entire show where she runs <laughs> after the bus and the bus, and the stops. bus driver stops that has never happened before fate Destiny, TV lies. show, there's lies, but no bus drivers are dicks. You've run and they just drive off. <laughs> Happens all the time to me. <laughs> not just to me. Like when, when, you, when I'm on the bus, which is a lot, I see it happen pretty much every journey. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that it happens. It happens. Maybe Australia. Maybe they're just nicer in Australia. Nah, bus drivers are universally dicks. <laughs> Do you know what? I really hope there's not a bus driver who watches this. They're just, just going to well, hear this. Well, maybe if you stop for people when they were running for the bus. To, to be fair, I'm fairly certain they have rules. that are. They're, 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 I don't think they're supposed to, officially. Dicks. I, I'm stick, like, they're not all bad. I'm sticking up for some of them. I, no, I'm not, you, you, play, you play devil's advocate. I'm not you having this blanket discrimination happens, against everyone with this, this, this profession. <laughs> Well, I bet I've been on too many buses. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so she gets on the bus, she ends up at this this kind of warehouse, empty building kind of thing. Obviously, it's something mm. that these people are just renting for the, the time being, or maybe they're squatting, who knows. Uh, and it's these two, these two doctors. Uh, one's a physicist, uh, maybe both are physicists, but one, one specifies she's a physicist. Yeah. And they like, oh, hey, oh, hey Nora, uh, nice to see you. So come through, they, they take her to this guy, Let's let's not brush over that when she gets there, mm. they're just playing a piano. They got a, they got a grand piano in the middle of this room. That's all they've got, pretty that's, much. That's true. Yeah. And they're playing "Take on Me" because which recurs multiple which, times. Which does is, is an important note. It recurs multiple times in the episode. Uh, piano here, and then we have a sort of remix, sort of it's later on, and then gorgeous the gorgeous brass version. Yeah. And then the end credits uh, has the actual song, the original. Yeah. So. Yeah, a lot of take on me in this this episode. Uh, so she's taken to this little doctor, like an actual medical doctor, who's going to give her a, a check up and see how she is before she can go through this this thing. And also as a test, they have to put her in a box, which yeah, you know, is intimidating because it's like, like, are they going to ship me off somewhere? Are they going to lock me in and take me somewhere? Are they going to do yeah? This? I mean, they, they say you know it's not locked. You can get out anytime you want. I think it's more just a a test of will. Like, well, are you can, determined but, enough to go through with this? But they can say anything they want before. It doesn't mean they're not they just, can. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're trusted enough to go into that box, like they could just lock it immediately as soon as you go they in. Could. It's like, oh great, I'm kidnapped now. Bugger. Yeah. Uh, they've even got packing foam in there. <laughs> that's, that's true. Maybe it'll be nice to draw some air holes at least. Because yeah. <laughs> they're shipping us somewhere, so he's going to get damaged. Uh dear, uh, but then she's she after the, the checkup she's taken up with against again the doctors and they they sit with her, and you know I actually just point out you know, kind of similar to the the whole Wayne meeting in season one, like she's taking this money and the guys like oh you can take your money in the box with you if you want because some people are worried we're going to run off with it just once they're mm. in the box, and she's like no I trust you and I just it reminded me of that moment where she, the PayPal in season one yeah. where she has to pay them. Because she did that basically on no knowledge of what she was doing. She didn't even know about the hugs. She just sort of did it. Yeah, she was like, eh, go on then. Because that's how broken she is, that she's, she's willing to take the risk and find out what's going on for that money. Yeah. But uh, so she she has this further interview with the, the two doctors and the doctors are concerned that she's, one of them is that she's concerned that she's got cold feet. She doesn't believe that she intends in actually going to the machine. And to be fair, we know that to an extent. I mean, we think she may be tempted, but we know that her intent is actually to sort of prove that they're... Well, yeah. At least so she claims. Yes, yes. At least from whatever them I've heard, she doesn't intend to. 
Uh, and that, that, this conversation is, is very interesting because Nora asks, why haven't you done it? One of them says there's no reason for her to. She, she's, everything she needs is here. So that would maybe imply she didn't lose anyone. She didn't lose anyone, plus, you know, maybe just the scientific curiosity of doing this. Yeah. Uh, and then the other woman uh, says, well, I don't like my odds. And she's like, well, but what do you mean odds? Like, no, I know, we, we, I believe we send them through 100% of the time, but we don't know where they're sending them to. We know we're sending them to the same place that the departed went. But for all we know, that could be another planet. It could be space. You could just die instantly as soon as you yeah, get there. Yeah, yeah. Like I says, you know, the odds of it being somewhere that can sustain 140 million people with food and water. Yeah. It's pretty low. Which, is, to be fair, is a logical position uh, yeah, to take. Yeah, it makes sense for it to come from a scientist, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes, it makes complete sense. Uh, oh, I still think it went to an alternate Earth, so, you know. So it's, they're fine. It's, it's all good. Yeah, they're fine. Except the ones who landed in like, the middle of like a wall. You know, kind of like how Nightcrawler mm. can't teleport unless he sees where he's going because he may end up somewhere. So you think that? But you say that did they all just end up in the exact place that they were, just on the alternate Earth? Yeah, but in the other Earth, there may be a building in a different place. So. Oh, okay, I got you. I'm with you. Or they might land Ooh, where a car nasty. currently is, so they'll end up like sort of in the middle of a car with like their yeah, heads all the ones, the all the ones that vanished from, you know, in the cars. Oh they man, it'll, the it'll be worse for them because they were travel. Let's say you're traveling forty miles per hour in a car. And then you sort of appear on the other Earth, going that speed, but now you're just like sort of in the air. You just skid across the ground. You'd probably die. You'd yeah, probably... or a car will hit you. Yeah, or you'll be right in front of a building. You'll just whack into the building, splat. Either way, it's gonna hurt a lot. <laughs> and if you were in a plane when you vanished, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Unless you're lucky enough to just the hot air balloons going by, <laughs> you're, you're you're pretty screwed. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, so that that was very interesting. That was just like an interesting. So again, because we, uh, we said this a lot last season when the when the scientists like that came to visit the house said, you know, that they're, they're trying to like predict if it can happen again, and you know, mm. try and like sort of prevent it. And Nora asked, "Oh, why would it happen again?" And the scientist said, "Why wouldn't it?" Again, it's a very logical response from a scientist who's you know looked at it from like a you know probabilities and. That kind of thing. Yeah, it what, what's like the that. reason for this? Do you know, without just the assumption, why? And it's it's all it's all so with the uh, it's just just the idea of the the cold hard truth that Nora had never thought of kind of hurts and stings. It's like, oh yeah, my family might have vanished to a place where they just instantly died anyway because, yeah, you know wh- whatever. Uh, so then then they ask her a question. They said we've got one question together, and uh, it's very reminiscent of a question from last episode. I wouldn't just say reminiscent. I think it's you know the exact same. Was it was it the exact same? Was it was it twins and one could cure cancer if they lived? Well, no, because it was think... it was it was if you could kill the baby to save the world. That was last episode. I think I'm sure he still said kill, uh, cure cancer. Was it okay? But it wasn't twins. He, but he didn't mention twins. He said, "Would you kill a baby to yeah. cure cancer?" Which is kind of the same here. It's just. Yeah, yeah, it was, would you kill this, this baby will grow up and cure cancer, but only if the other baby is killed. Now, you wouldn't have to do it yourself, but you'd have to give the nod to say, it's okay, kill it. Yeah. Uh, it's not your kid. And she she says, yeah, of course I'd kill it. You know, she, she questions it a little bit first, though. She says, oh, is it my baby? I think that's the most telling one yeah. that, you know, that really feeds into this. If mm. it's hers, she she doesn't, she can't go through with it because she can't do that yeah. to herself again. But someone else, sure. And... You know, and that makes you sort of think back to her kids and then Lily. Like, she yeah. she lost her kids without choice, but Lily, well, it, who wasn't her kid, she could it, give up. It's that cold detachment that most people have. It's like, you know, okay, do you kill, you know, do you kill one person to save a hundred? But, and, and most people, they probably go, yeah. But then if it's if it's someone you know, yeah. you go, no, I, I, you know, I don't want to kill that person. It's that detachment. And, and we actually often talk about it in TV shows all the time, how, oh, they're going to threaten Earth. It's like, that's cool, but unless we have people on Earth that we care about specifically, it doesn't really mean anything to us. Yeah, it's just, it's just a number. It's just a number of people. It's not... Right. It doesn't really mean anything. Uh, and after, after she gives that response, and, you know, she's very, very kind of forceful because she says, does it matter if it's your kids? Like, yeah, it matters. If I'm answering the question, it matters. Mm. Uh, and after that, they just say, oh, yeah, we're not proceeding. Keep your money, and they just leave. Uh, and, like, Nora's kind of left broken by this. You know, she sort of runs out after them. They drive off away. Um... I mean, we see her again in the hotel room later, and she's smoking again. This is the second time I've seen this this season. To the yeah. point when Kevin walks in, he's like shocked, mm. uh, you know, to see it. he's like, "Wait, are you smoking?" Uh, and she 
like she is like angry about this. She's vindictive. Like she she's like I'm going to find these people and I'm going to like ruin them. I'm going to catch yeah. them. Like she this is a vendetta now, and it kind of shows that as much as she might have believed at one point that she was doing this for the for the right reasons, this is purely just a personal grudge at yeah. this point. I have to admit, I'm really curious as to why they didn't take her though, like specifically because. As far as I know, she answered the question correctly because, you know, last episode, the guy, you know, he says, oh, would you kill a baby to, save can- to cure cancer? And, he, uh, and you know, the answer was no, I wouldn't. And he, and he said they wouldn't take me. So I assume he was asked this question and, yeah. he, you know, he said no and they, they didn't take Which is a good point. Me. I don't think we speculated last, last episode that... It was this. No, it, it was this group like p- putting no. people across. Yeah. No, we we didn't at all. And I, I think uh, I think we said it seemed too far away to say it about the departure itself. I kind of I kind of vetoed that. Which is that. what Kevin Senior assumed. Yeah, but yeah, this makes more sense. That absolutely yeah. makes more so sense. So I, I assume that's what it was. So what is it that that they made the choice to turn her down on? Because it's not the answer to that question. It's I, not it, her saying yes. No, I don't think it is the answer. I think it's how they they answer it. I, I mm-hmm. think it's. What, why did they give the answer they give? Because she disputed it and said, is it my kid? Like, I think that's the part. And what, how did this guy answer? Did he just quickly go, no? Yeah. And does that, you know, is, yeah, is it the thought yeah. process behind it? You know, it's kind of like how in a math exam, you can get the question wrong. Yeah, but you if have you to just, show you're working out. But if you, all your steps are otherwise correct, you've just made a stupid error somewhere where the number's, you know, wrong. Yeah. Like, you get most of the marks. You, you can actually get an A in a math exam without getting any of the answers right. Like, it's possible. Yeah, it's unlikely, but it's possible. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. It's how you answer the question mm-hmm. rather than the actual answer. Uh, yeah. that would be my guess. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just intrigued as to their thought process as to what, what was the critique for this? You know, what, what was the analysis that they were making? Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe we'll get some more hints later on. Maybe we'll get some more ideas. Mm. Uh, but I, I think ultimately what it is though is this: they, they see that she's broken. I, I think they see that she is not in a I think anyone who goes through has to be content and know what they're doing and have to be in a... Because the last guy we saw, that they mentioned in this episode, or they went through, the guy who saw her in episode two, mm. he seemed very calm, he seemed very content, he knows what he's doing. Uh, everyone who she looked at in all those videos, they, they were all very sort of calm, peaceful. Yeah, I think that's a point. You know, they're saying, oh, I do this with my own free will, I want to do this. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, they did something very calm, very rational, whereas she isn't. She's emotional about it. Yeah, I think that's the difference. Yeah, okay. So, no. So, they're back at the hotel. And this scene was an awkward watch. This is where both of them, you know, we've seen throughout the episode, both of them are broken, both of them have problems. Uh, she's like, what happened? Why did you call Laurie? Uh, like, did you see someone? Did you think you see someone? And he won't tell her who he thought he saw. Yeah. He's like, well, you know, why won't you tell me? Because the last time I told you everything, you I woke up handcuffed to the bed and you'd left. Which, at this point, is like three years ago. That is just th- yeah, that's the three it's, he's still incident. holding on to that. Um, and the, the two of them, like, you know, it gets heated, it gets angry. They both bring up, you know, points about what's going on. Uh, and he gets angry about the book. He sets it in fire. And then, he, <laughs> then he t- he's like, if you want to talk, then what do you want to talk about? Don't make me, you know, broach whatever subject's eating at you and then she brings up why didn't you stop me why didn't you stop me giving up lily and admit it it's because you were relieved and then he hits back with uh the sentiment of well the reason why you don't want a new kid is because that would mean you were okay it would mean you're over you know you'd never forget your previous kids but you'd have dealt with it you'd have moved on and you wouldn't get pity anymore no one would feel sorry for you because it means you're okay yeah and it was also the other point that really hit hard for me in this is when he said, "Yeah, but you, you, you." She never even asked him his opinion. You know, mm. it, it didn't, it didn't even matter whether or not he wanted to give her up. Which ties into again the start of this episode with the money, with the the scanner, and going through the other. Yeah, entry. it's all just she's, she's so in her own head. Yeah, and they both kind of are to a point. I remember we had a fight last season. You said Kevin was being selfish, and I thought selfish, selfish was hard, uh, but harsh at the time. Um, and because honestly, yeah, cause honestly, looking at them right here, right now, I feel like Nora is maybe veering to the selfish side of things, whereas Kevin is just actually kind of psychotic. <laughs> or like, that's, that's, a, that's a harsh <laughs> word. That's a harsh word. But like, he, mentally he's mentally unstable. He's mentally unstable, and she it's, it's, again, it's also emotional. I'm not saying it's not, but it's just uh, just this example. You never even asked me. Like, yeah. we, we were both the parents of this child, and you didn't. Especially ask me. as you know, he Lily was left for him. Not for her. That's true. Yeah, 
Uh, I think that's a very good point. And I, I think like her thing also in season one has always been like pe- you know the way people look at her, the way people feel sorry for her because she was the the one in the town who lost her entire family. She she has been the entire show. She has been defined by her children. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that, that's it. Like whether that was you know the original children that she lost, and then obviously Lily and what's gone on with that. It's We're, all been it's been defining her. And Kevin, to an extent, has always been defined by the fact that he wanted to escape. Because even you know in the flashback in season one, he wanted to escape his life. Like he, he was having like a midlife crisis, and right. here he still like all season two he was kind of like wanting to commit suicide. You know, it was his sort yeah. of darker half that was doing it subconsciously, but it, it was there. It was there, yeah. And this season, he's still putting the bag over his head to feel alive. So, yeah. like, you know, they're, they're both still clearly defined by kind of what they have been the, the entire time. Yeah. And I think it goes back to what we said at the first episode of this season. You know, they're both still broken. They're not fixed. Yeah, and by not talking about it. Like, because this is the thing. Kevin says, we don't talk about anything. This is the problem. And that's kind of why this got to this point. They had this blow-up. Uh, mm. Where at least for the time being, they 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 are separate. Uh, you know, they're both going on their own adventure here, and yeah, which I'm hoping means that at least the next two are in Australia because we get one from Kevin and, and one from Nora. <laughs> uh, I believe the next episode's a Matt episode. Hmm, I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> Still a miracle, baby. <laughs> hmm. uh, I, I, I only know that because I, I seen the, the title of the episode is It's a Matt, 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 Matt World, which is a reference to It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, which is a very good film. Uh, they don't make comedies like that. That said, that film was about them all travelling to get to something, so... Oh, maybe he's travelling to Australia to get the book back. Yeah, we don't need more people travelling to Australia, goddammit. Um, Just maybe. What was the, actually there was something else in this episode? Do you remember how I was joking about how, uh, you know, oh, it was when um, Laurie was on the phone to, to Kevin. It's like you just picked up your bag. You've got responsibilities here in town, and you just went to Australia. I'm like, yeah, Laurie, grill him. Why is he in Australia? Yeah, give him shit for it. God damn it. <laughs> Laurie's a bitch. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, so. God. Is, Matt's going to go to Australia next episode. He's going to go and get his book back. He wants his book back. He's going to be travelling to Australia. God damn it. Yes. Oh, although, that's going to be an interesting journey, though, because as we found out... So after this, like Kevin grabs his bag and walks out. He leaves. Yeah. Uh, and the, the fire starts the alarm, and you know, eventually the sprinkles come out at the end. But Ke- Kevin, we see him go outside. Laurie's sitting... Uh, not Laurie, sorry. I keep doing that. Uh, Nora's sitting in the bed. And he's, he's outside, and we see a lot of firemen and stuff. But then we hear some other things. Apparently, some explosions happened, which is not the hotel, because Kevin even looks up. He's like, "Was that us? Like, was that?" In the- <laughs> yeah, just in case. Yeah, but apparently, for some reason, the the airports are all grounded. Like, the- which which maybe means Matt won't get to Australia, which is a little annoying. Yeah, um, but it makes me wonder. Okay, what what happened? Like, is some big attack happened? So, some big accident happened in Australia? Yeah, um, I'm I'm intrigued. I I think we will learn more about this. I think it's yeah. too big an event not to. Yeah, but you know, like, is it related to the fact that we're hitting the anniversary soon? Is that is that something to do with seems, that? Seems seems plausible, doesn't it? Uh, you know, it's kind of like how the guilty remnant had like a big thing. Yeah. they were planning. Did someone else, some other group, do something? Who knows? Uh, I'm sure we'll find out. But sure enough, he gets outside, and then Kevin Senior rolls up uh, with Grace. He's like, "Ask my boy." It's like, <laughs> and, but of course, what the one key thing here is that he says, to, all, all in the fact that he knew he was here because he saw him on TV and he called around the yeah. hotels. Uh, so again, that was just a kind of nice natural seed. Like that's why he knew he was here. So it's, it's not just a coincidence. Yeah, it uh, made sense. That that said, this, this this show could play it off as like a a coincidence and say it's oh it's you know divine. It could if it had done. I think in this show I'd have gone with it. But I like that there was a logical reason for this one. Yeah, no, this one's fair. Uh, but of course, he's he's clearly told Grace about his son at this point. Mm. You know, based on the end of the last episode, you know yeah. that conversation clearly kept going, and. Is like, oh, you're with anyone? You're you're going to be trapped here for a while because yeah, he goes, are you here on your own? Yeah, uh, when he says, of course, he says yes, which of course is you know again showing the fight he just had with Nora. He feels on his own. He feels that she's not yeah. got his back, so he is on his own for now. Uh, and of course, when when he said that you know the planes are grounded, I'm like, shit, shit, trapped there. I really hope Matt's episode takes place a little before this, so he gets in before the planes are grounded. <laughs> Because <laughs> we, we we've seen them jump around in time a little bit like that when it does a focused episode on someone. True, true. Oh, but what, what if that's the drama? Of the episode though is that it's not easy to get to Australia, so you has to mm, no, get a boat <laughs> or something. That's way too slow. 
That is pretty slow. But you know, I'm just thinking maybe that's what the story is: is that he, that he yeah, can't no, just get a plane. He has to do. He has alternatively, to... even if he does manage to get to Australia, how does he find them? Because mm. you know, yeah, how how does he 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 thinks Kevin Senior has the the book. I mean, or that, I assume that's the copy he's going for anyway, because he wouldn't surely he wouldn't know Kevin took the book with him. Well, maybe because maybe that's why he decides to go. Though maybe he maybe he's, he walks in like John and Laurie are there. Oh, by the way, Kevin's in Australia. What? <laughs> Both my yeah. books are in Australia. <laughs> How did yeah, that happen? No, that's fair. And then, but then, even if he manages to get to Australia, though, quite easily, he still has the problem of tracking them down. That that is that is true. So that that is that is curious. Um, Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if Laurie even goes because knowing what Kevin's going through, because Ke- Kevin's clearly having a psychotic break. Yeah, and that would create some interesting drama, I think, between her and John as well. Because obviously he was Possibly, a little yeah. bit annoyed when she answered the phone and you know, was on it. With you know, they were out at dinner, and it's like yeah, you're going to touch your your ex husband, really. Well, I, I think what, what made that scene work for me is I think it was the drama of at that time we still think it may be Evie. So it's more the drama of he, you know, might get close and hear yeah, or find yeah, and, out. Yeah, and, or... and she's trying to keep it from him. Like, yeah. she, she doesn't want him to hear that. Whereas when it turns out to be what it is, like, you know, I don't know if she still operates under the whole, you know, patient-doctor confidentiality in this case, but she might tell him more when she goes back to the table. But Yeah, I, d- I doubt it's strict confidentiality, but more yeah. just a, a respect. That it's like, okay, let's not just tell everyone this. But... Like that's why it's like an emergency. She has to take the phone call because she knows he's having a break. It's like no, I'm not. I'm not hanging up. I'm not taking this phone call because I care more about my ex-husband. I'm taking this phone call right, because right, he's delirious that... and he's thinking things. Right, but that's what it looks like from John's side. Oh sure. And yeah. the thing is, she can't just tell everyone. It's like oh hey, yeah, the the leader of the police department's having a psychotic break again. Oh sure, yeah, absolutely, uh, yeah. That's a fair point. Yeah, I'd forgotten. Even until she she said, oh you by the way, you're the chief of police. Like, oh so he is. <laughs> yeah. God damn it! I can't just leave like that. <laughs> yeah, now he's so grounded. He's got for. Now he's grounded in Australia. Well, this is what Tom's there for. <laughs> he's inexperienced. He's picking up the slack. He'll learn on the job. <laughs> uh dear. Uh, so, so yeah. So he leaves, and we leave him in the car. Meanwhile, we cut back to Nora, and we just nothing really happens. The sprinkles are on, but it ends in that close-up of her eyes. And it's just that you know that constant drip of water because it's running down her face, but it's yeah. coming off her eyelid. So it's not really, it doesn't look like crying, but it's kind of emulating the idea that there's just, that effect. Yeah, it's, it's I kind love of love that shot though. You know when all the when she sat there and all the lights are going off. Yeah, it's just that wide shot tracking in slowly. Yeah, or tracking away slowly rather. Uh, but it's just it's just so pathetic. She's sitting there. She's not even got shoes on, and it's just she's getting wet, and she's just sitting there broken. And then it's that close up of her eye, and it's just it, it was very sort of you know tears in the rain kind of. Yeah. Like you can't but, even uh, and, you can't see her tears because it's raining. To... Yeah, and but she's so broken that there is there is literally a fire alarm going off. This is an emergency. Mm. She should be getting out. To be but fair, she doesn't care about her own life enough. Yeah, but to be fair. She Unlike it, there, everyone yeah. else in the building, she knows exactly what the fire is and where it is. And... It's it's true. But, you know, the po- thematically it still works. Mm-hmm. And and again, to link back to, you know, the TVs and the hotels, the, the fire alarm as well is another link to remind us of that. It's like, no, she is dead. She is kind of already on that side. That they're not, they're not fully alive. That's a good point. Yeah, they're not fully alive. And, you know, I hope that the ending of the show is them coming back to life that's what you'd hope for the the happier ending is that they both get through this 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 troubled time in their lives which has been a seven year period at this point and they 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 come out on the other end that's what i i would hope and it'll be a it'll be a very crowd pleasing moment i think if we get that in the finale if that's what we end up it will but it's that you know that ending of the first episode has me concerned that how how we get into that and then be happy because they've changed their names because this stupid book's going about. So she's lying about yeah, going quite Kevin. possibly. And she's so we're going to get to the last episode, and she's going to like we're going to see her ride back home, and then Kevin's going to be there as an old man. And that's I'll be ending. down for that. That's your ending. I don't know, but let's that, do it. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping we're going to think that all hope is lost, and then we'll get that scene, and we'll find out yeah. they've been together all this time. That'd be nice. That'd be lovely. And then we get middle-aged Jill and middle-aged Tom. <laughs> Walking around and uh, don't ruin it. Who else? Don't, is, who else don't, can don't, be around? Don't, you don't need to put too many people in old age makeup just to to work this. Well, the first thing is though, it's not old. I mean, for them, All right, would, aged up. Yeah, for them, it would be more of a you know a couple of wrinkles. Maybe like it wouldn't be the same kind of thing. It's actually yeah. harder. It's harder to make someone who's like 
20 looks like 40, I think. That it, it is. is. To... They had that... Do you know the one that always sticks out to me is looking really awkward? Is the one at the end of Harry Potter. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that looked... Because they just, they just look the same age. With them. It's supposed to be like 19 years later, and it's like, yeah, they, they look a little bit like the same. This, this just isn't worked. It, yeah, it's not... Honestly, at that point, different actors... But like 50 to 70 is kind of easy. You, know, you, you need skilled people still to do the makeup, but comparatively yeah. easy. But the, the hair, I mean, literally, you get, you get some uh, powder, put it in your hair, yeah. and your hair's grey. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the hair done. Just need yeah. someone to do the wrinkles. So much easier. And then you, just, and then you do, do the old voice, because I'm an old man. Ah. Jobs are good. Yeah. But obviously not me. I, I was, that was terrible. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not an actor, though. I'm not paid to do this. <laughs> They're paid <laughs> exactly. to do it. Anyway, uh, so is that us? Did we talk about everything? <laughs> I, th- I think we might have done. <laughs> I think we did. Oh, dear. So, no, no. Uh, so, it was, it was an emotional episode. It was a solid episode. It was a hard-hitting one. Um... Because it was all just building up to a very, very bad place. It was b- building up to this this break in the scenes. But, it, but I'm kind of... It leaves me hopeful in the sense that, okay, this is the middle of the season and this yeah. is the worst place. So now it's the, the journey to fix. Um, but I think they both have to go and solve their own problems first themselves. I think they'll try to solve their own problems themselves, but they'll okay. fail and they'll have to solve them together. I could see that. I could see that. Uh Oh, that's interesting. Uh, although I'm not sure how happy Kevin's going to be when he realizes that his dad's buying into all this real Messiah bullshit. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. Oh, also, oh, I really hope Matt finds them and we can have some some top quality fun. Oh, that would that would be good. Also, I loved when uh, Nora was like when when they started fighting about the book towards the end. She said, "Oh, you want to be Jesus Christ superstar?" That really cracked me up. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> Uh, dear, I, but... I do like how this this show manages to be consistently funny, even amongst like really heavy moments like that. But it's still oh, yeah. like that's that's funny. Yeah. Uh, so of course, though, we need at least one more Gary Busey mentioned before the show ends. We do. The, the, it can't be done without another one. Honestly, if there's not a post credit scene of Gary Busey himself walking onto the camera and saying, "I bet you wish you'd do a real there." Ta ta. <laughs> <laughs> I want a cameo. Oh, oh, I need Gary Busey on this show now. Oh, just, just at the end. Or uh, like they'll run away to some other country at the end of the end of the season, right? They'll, they'll go and make peace somewhere else. Maybe, maybe oh, they go. Gary to... Busey never left. He yeah, just, he they just find vanished. They, they go to a small village in France, and they're, they're sitting there. And they look over across the bar. They're all happy. And they go, "Is that Gary Busey?" How, how, to be fair, though, how does Gary Busey hide? He has such a, a recognizable face. That's Gary F. And Busey. Yes, yeah, Gary F. And Busey. Cut to black. <laughs> end of the show. That's is that... better than the happy ending bollocks show had before. <laughs> That's what the whole thing's up. It's still ha- they're still together. It's still a happy yeah, ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and I don't need all that, that shit you gave me before. I need Gary Busey. <laughs> or if my alternate Earth theory... Oh, actually, no. Here we go. Here you do. This is the sequel series you're doing in about 10 years. You you have everyone who has departed come back, and Gary Busey is the lead character because he's one who came back. He leads the charge. The returned. That's what it'll be called. I'm pretty sure there's already a show called that, but it doesn't matter. I'd watch it. Yeah. Anyway, we're done. Yeah, yeah. we're just thinking about Gary Busey scenarios. Yeah, right? yeah, that's all we're doing. We're, we're, we're fanficting Gary Busey scenarios. So uh, that has been Leftovers Season 3, Episode 4. So thank you very much. Let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mail underscore fudge for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. You can do that over there. But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV. We'll see you next time.